Hello, my friends, and welcome to Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and we are going through a series called Love Poems from God, where we are featuring 12 sacred voices from the East and the West. We have studied Rabir of the Sufi tradition, uh, St. Francis of Assisi, Rumi, and Meister Eckert, and we are now studying the poetry of St. Thomas Aquinas. For each one of these uh, phenomenal figures, I have given a little bit of a backstory. So if you want to listen uh, uh, to their stories, go into the archives, and it's always the part one of each of those segments, okay? So right now we are going to hear some of the poetry that um, came through the voice of St. Thomas Aquinas. The first one is called, Whenever He Looks at You. God sees nothing in us that he has not given. Everything is empty until he places what he wishes into it. The soul is like an uninhabited world that comes to life only when God lays his head against us. The delight a child can know, tossing a ball into the air. My Lord confessed he experiences whenever he looks at you. He sees nothing in us that he has not given. The next poem is called The Divine Intimacy. The experience of something out of nothing Is that not how one might describe magic? A hat held upside down may appear empty, though at God's command all life that any planet has ever known could dance around the hat's rim holding hands. The root that needs no ground is he, and from that root all has come. Creation is God's litter, and all are nursed. Some grow more plump than others, indeed. Eternally amazed is the soul before God, watching him expand. Witnessing God reveal himself to himself. That divine intimacy, I know. Capox Universe. Capox Universe. Capable of the universe are your arms when they move with love. And I know it is true that your feet are never more alive than when they are in defense of a good cause. I want to fund your effort, your efforts. Stay near beauty, for she will always strengthen you. She will bring your mouth close to hers and breathe, inspire you the way the light does the fields. The earth inhales God. Why should we not do the same? The sacred flame we tend inside needs the chance of every tongue, the communion with all, as capable as God are we. Does God understand himself? Does God understand himself? Not in the form of creation. For creation simultaneously exists and does not exist. How could that not be in a mind that is infinite? Thus God holds no one accountable, especially himself, at all. If you had a dream in which someone broke into your house and stole a certain object, would you, upon waking and finding that object still there, call the constable? Not if you were in your right mind. And whenever God wakes in us, his, our thinking becomes clear. Nothing is missing. And how could he not forgive then? 
what never really happened and or what he caused. This last poem is called, Could You Embrace That? I said to God, let me love you. And he replied, which part? All of you, all of you, I said. Dear, God spoke, you are as a mouse wanting to impregnate a tiger who is not even in heat. It is a feat way beyond your courage and strength. You would run from me if I removed my mask. I said to God again, Beloved, I need to love you, every aspect, every pore. And this time God said, There is a hideous blemish on my body though it is such an infinitesimal part of my being. Could you kiss that if it were revealed? I will try, Lord. I will try. And then God said, That blemish is all the hatred and cruelty in this world. Thanks so much for stopping by. Make sure to like or subscribe in your favorite podcast venue, and please pass this along to anyone you think would feel this as an encouraging word for them today.